Hello my lovelies, welcome back to Rouge Pat Beauty. I have just been putting my base on. You've seen it all before. I'm really going for the IT products. Um, I just started putting my makeup on and then I thought, I know, I'll switch the camera on and have a chat with you. I've actually got a meeting today. So I want to look presentable but not, it's nothing exciting. Don't, don't get, you know, worked up or anything. But I, I want to look reasonably presentable. Um, awake at least I've not been sleeping well at all but last night I did sleep really well so I feel a lot better if I have two or three nights of disturbed sleep it's not good for me I'm a natural I think I should hibernate basically I really do so yeah I slept really well which is good Betty's just clambering about so, um, yeah, I just thought I'd put the camera on. It's a lovely day outside, although it's getting a little bit cloudy. There's a threat of rain, although looking at the sky, it could almost be a threat of snow, which is quite exciting. <laughs> I've rooted out this old frat boy from the Balm um, cosmetic brand, and I love it. It's one of the best blushes ever. I've had it a long time, but it smells okay. How often do I say that? I'm sure a lot of people are recoiling in horror. Um, I was watching a really interesting video. Um, Samantha, I'll put a link. She's a Canadian um, YouTuber, huge Canadian YouTuber, but really down to earth. She's a trained makeup artist. I think she worked for Mac, but she um, did a great video with a pro makeup artist. And I absolutely, totally and utterly um just ab absorbed everything and agreed with everything because she sort of said yes she's a trained makeup artist but she's been out of it for a few years and i agree with her i mean i'm a trained makeup artist and you do sometimes think what am i missing now when i talk to friends who are still in the business not a lot but the funny thing is how different the makeup applications often are on YouTube and Instagram to the reality of being on counter. And a lot of the things that you see on YouTube and Instagram, you would just never ever even consider doing on a client. But the thing I really enjoyed was the um, sanitizing aspect because it isn't something you think about when you're doing it on your own face. And there's a lot of things that I do to myself. If I was working on a client, I would never, ever do. Um, you know, you would never use a lipstick from the bullet. You would never use a lip gloss applicator. It's all on the back of your hand and you'd have all your little brushes to apply. And the continuous cleaning of your hands. Continuous. The other one that really made me laugh was she was saying when you watch people doing makeup and they're doing it maybe on a friend and they're there with their hand sort of slapped on the head putting makeup on and you literally do not touch a client if you can help it there are times when you have to sort of lift the eyelid to put the mascara on and maybe you know just here there just to steady your hand but you try not to touch the client's face a because it's not hygienic b because it's quite disconcerting having somebody in your personal space and that's the other thing you are in a person's personal space when you're putting makeup on which means that you do need to think about i know this is a really odd topic but it just got me thinking about all the things i did when i worked on counter personal hygiene i know it sounds bizarre but deodorant so making sure that you're not a bit smelly but also not wearing a fragrance that's too overpowering um which used to be interesting at christmas time when i was absolutely bathed in opium and i used to say to people you know i'm really sorry but i've got opium on today because it is a very very strong fragrance but really you know thinking about things like that so you know that you've got deodorant on you're not too smelly also even things like when you have your lunch when i knew i had clients in the afternoon i would avoid having things like something with a salad with garlic in or some sort of onion some you know something like that i'd be very very careful what i chose no sort of really smelly crisps or anything 
and just having things like mints on counter just to ensure that my breath was fresh because you are literally in somebody's personal space um and i'm always always being conscious of that and you can usually tell if somebody's comfortable with you working on them or if you find that they are a bit they naturally move back when you're working on them you know to maybe take a step back and just work at a distance um but I really found the video absolutely fascinating because it did take me back to all the things that you have to think about. And it is quite exhausting because it's not just about the makeup, it's about the prep. It's having everything ready, but it's ensuring everything's sanitised. It's ensuring that everything's safe for the client. Um, even down to the basics, some used to come in with full makeup on, so you'd have to remove their makeup, prep the skin. Some would come in with their skin bare but they hadn't got any skincare on so it's making sure you had all that ready as well and just your sort of space making sure that it's I always needed a very tidy space um some of the girls could work in absolute mess and I don't know how they did it I had to have everything lined up and I had to make sure lids were back on it just kept me very calm and centered when I was working I couldn't work with a busy counter with a busy station at all but there are so many things that I do that I would never ever do on a client and I just wanted to say that um, because I'm sure people look and think oh I thought she was a professional makeup artist but it's different when it's your own face how I put my makeup on me is not how I do a client I mean I whack a lot of concealer on I sort of throw it all on but with a client it would be you don't want to take ages but you want to have time so if they were concerned about breakouts it would be more precision covering rather than what i do to myself because i said before my own face actually bores me quite a lot um but yeah just things like the hygiene i found really really interesting and you do literally have to keep you know sanitizing your hands making sure everything's clean you know ensuring the products you're using or the tops are clean that you've got you know scrapers to scrape off the lipstick and making sure your hands are clean because you work off the back of your hands a lot and the biggie that a lot of people do and i think the makeup artist that samantha had was saying was she watches people go on their brushes no tap the excess off as soon as you blow on your brush you know what i'm going to say you've got there's a bit of you there, a bit of your DNA on the makeup brush. So you never ever blow on your makeup brushes. That's a huge no-no. Now I think I was probably, I was quite lucky. I didn't really have any bad, bad habits um, when I trained, really. Some people, if they go into it later in life, have already developed these little bad habits and it's really hard to break if you're used to sort of blowing your brush or something it, it can get into a habit but i i hadn't done that before so it was quite easy for me but the blowing on the brushes it does make me cringe when i see people do it on on video it was a really really good um informative one to watch the other thing um i think what's the hardest to apply everybody's different eyeliner if you're doing you know like a eyeliner flick you do get people that are quite twitchy when it comes to their eyes you do get people with very watery eyes the hardest one is when you do the waterline and i would say if somebody wants the waterline doing unless they're very very comfortable let them do it themselves and again with mascara people can be very they can be fine but as soon as you go here you get that reaction and it's normal to get that so i used to let a lot of people put their own mascara on if that's what they wanted to do i was happy to do it um lip liner is another one oh lip liner it's very difficult and you get people that move their mouths as you're putting it on so they could sort of move with the pencil which is very frustrating um and brows brows is a very personal one and often i had a lot of people i worked on didn't want their brows doing so again it's something i would ask somebody you know are you happy for me to do your brows how do you particularly like them do you like them you know distinctive but sometimes people say oh, i'll do it myself and often that's 
being a good makeup artist is giving people the freedom it's not always about you putting it on it's understanding and embracing what your client wants and needs um on the eyes i've just used the effect powder from gosh this is shade three zero zero three and it's mink that's all i've used that's all i'm popping on today just enough so yes i really loved it really enjoyed it and some of it made me smile because you do recoil when you watch some videos but you also have to understand that not everybody's had the training and also different brands have different training and different makeup academies have different training and you yourself find different methods that work for you so I would probably apply mascara differently to somebody on the next counter or somebody that trained at so-and-so because you all have your own little ways that work best for you to getting products onto the face this is the Charlotte Tilbury color chameleon I've been using it quite a lot this is dark pearl yes and um, they do recommend this for brown eyes it does have a sort of minky tone to it just enough depth without being too OTT and then I'm just going to go under there easy to do that without looking in the mirror just do it by touch right more gosh got the brow gel I kind of like the freedom of doing my own face because I don't have to think about um, the sanitizing aspect because it is quite exhausting when you're working on somebody because you're thinking about tones and colors and you know what they want and involving them in the whole consultation which is essential I would never ever do somebody's makeup unless they said I don't want to see it until the end I would never do anybody's makeup all the way through without letting them have a look so I'd always have a good a mirror that did the whole face not just a little compact mirror a proper full face mirror so they could see the whole effect was very important for me but it is it's exhausting making sure that everything's right and you get into a routine so it is second nature um, because I enjoyed obviously the colour and I really enjoyed looking at somebody's blank face and thinking right we're gonna use that 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 and that today um, I mean if you're putting mascara on a client you would never use the product like this so you don't and this is what's frustrating so you would be saying to a client this is a really great mascara and it's got the most amazing wand because the formulation plays a big part but the wand is really you know the conductor's baton and you'd be selling this mascara you know because it's brilliant like the false lash from Yves Saint Laurent which I absolutely I wore it every day it was and I think it's still they still sell it it's an amazing mascara and you'd be saying you know it's great and it was and the wand was just like a toilet brush it was fabulous it was just bristles bristles and more bristles but on counter you can't use it from the tube it's not hygienic so you just have the standard mascara applicator ones and I it just drove me mad I used to complain all the time how on earth can you give the same effect to the lashes when you haven't got the one that's the reason it's such a great application you know you'd have to say here's the wand but I'm gonna have to apply it with this so that's a frustration sometimes because having to be hygienic lets you down when you're showing products to customers but you would never apply on a client from that right I'm gonna use obviously frat boy it's one of those pinks that just it's just the right amount of pink and when I started we didn't have foundation brushes I think it was Clinique that was the first brand that had the flat um, foundation brushes so we did use our fingers a lot for application there weren't as many options with brushes although I loved 
I, it was very naughty of me. I used to borrow brushes from other counters. When I fell in love with the brush, I'd go and borrow one from Dior and then I'd nip across to Clinique and I'd have a couple from Chanel and I'd use them and I'd have to be very, it's very, very naughty because you're only supposed to use your own tools. But I loved using tools and I didn't use brushes for the job they were meant for, that kind of thing. But I do remember foundation, it was always hands because we didn't have foundation brushes at all um, and then Clinique brought them out and I was completely fascinated with these flat headed foundation I still got one I bought one when they first came out and I still have it that's how good it is tap 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 um Anastasia Beverly Hills and Resi you know the highlighter that I love and I'm so pleased it's out again because I know a few of you wanted it last time and it disappeared and you've now got it. So what else can I tell you about counter? What other things do I notice that's different? Um, nails. Oh my goodness. I cringe. I don't know how people do it. I used to have very long nails um, and then when I started, when I trained to be, I did night class to train in Swedish massage. I did anatomy, physiology and massage and we had to have our nails short. And I don't think I looked back after that. I kind of saw the sense. Now, you had your nails painted on counter and they were allowed to be, you know, a sensible, clean length. But when people have them, you know, to those points and I just think you get makeup stuck underneath them and oh it makes me cringe when I just think about oh what's what's living under there just no no not at all um couldn't do it and I don't know how people put makeup on you know when they've got like a, a jumper on um we call it a polo neck in the UK I, how because I get makeup on these you know, I've got more chins to be fair. Um, I'm just going to use the La Roche Posay um, lip balm because my lips are quite dry. Just going to do that. So, yeah, that's the other thing I find interesting is when people have really high collars and they're smothering themselves in foundation and they take it down their neck as well. <gasps> fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Betty's trying to get on my knee, as she always does when I'm sat here. And we never succeed, do we? We just pat Mummy's knee for a little bit. Yes. Do you want to try? Are you coming? Are you coming? No, we're just going to wiggle our ears. Right, over the balm. It's going to dilute it a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I've got a little mini Givenchy lipstick. Um, I can't remember when I got this. It was a sample um, sent to me through something or other. But I really like it. It is La Rouge Givenchy 202. I don't know if this is still an existing line in their lipsticks. I'm not sure. But it's the perfect sort of pink again. Betty's just sat right there watching me intently putting my lipstick on. Right, that's it. I just oh no, I need to put some of my fairy godmother on from English Mineral just to set everything down. So yes, I'll put a link um, to the video and you can watch the pro in action and all the little things that that she does. I can't remember some of the other things that I was there going. Yeah, I agree with that and I agree with that. Um, it was just really interesting to look at it in different ways and I do know I mean I have friends who say to me what the hell's all this baking business because it's just not something they do on counter um, and they're just like and what's all this even when you know contouring came in and they're just like my god you wouldn't spend all that time chiseling out cheekbones that don't exist so it is interesting to hear both sides of it because I've done one side and then I'm in this side I can kind of understand and balance it out but friends who don't do the social media thing and then I say things or they've seen things and like what the hell is all that about I find it really really funny um because they're just like my god you just people just want their face looking better than it already is that's all they don't 
come on counter and say, can you please chisel me out to look like Kim Kardashian or anything? Very rarely, apparently, does anybody ask to look like Kim Kardashian. There you go. Right, I shall leave it there. Betty's looking at me in the sweetest way, so maybe we'll get a little walk before Mummy has to do her meeting. Yes. She's all peepies. Her little eyes are all peepies. You can't be tired, baby. You've had a full night's sleep. Okay. And we've got some eye drops to put in as well. She's very good. She's very, very good. She takes medicine and all sorts of things without any problem. She's such a good girl, aren't you? Yes, you don't fight us at all. Right, my lovelies, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Um, let me know what you'd like to discuss for Topic Tuesdays. I'm going to leave it to you. If I don't get any suggestions, I'm not filming them because I don't want to decide because I can't think of anything interesting. So you choose for me. Not politics. Can we stay away from Brexit? I don't know enough, to be honest, um, to really have an opinion. I'm going to put some earrings in and do that. I can't put earrings in without a mirror. Is anybody else the same after all these years? I cannot put earrings in unless I have a mirror. The same with um, contact lenses. I can't put contact lens I can't take contact lenses out without a mirror I'm going to take the hair down that's the other thing I can't cope with I don't know how people put their makeup on when they've got their hair all over the place I've tried it a couple of times and it just never works for me I never feel right I like it away from my face right lovelies I am definitely going now see you soon